Hello, Uncle Jim here. Today I want to share with you my favorite option strategy, and that's the option wheel. I'm going to go into the very first part of the option wheel, which is selling puts. I'm going to share with you my strategy, and at the very end of the video, so stay till the end, I'm going to actually give you a demo. I'm going to go through the steps I take first to find good companies and then to actually make the put trade. So stay tuned. I think you're really going to enjoy what I have for you today. Okay, before I jump into the details with this video about selling puts, I do want to mention a few things about what's going on in the market. I do believe they will have a, a debt ceiling agreement. Hopefully by the end of the week, they the House passed an agreement today, and it, it I think it had almost an equal number of Democrats and Republicans. And my guess is it's going to go through the Senate and it will be signed. So that will be kind of a tailwind. I also think the Fed's going to hold steady. There's still some people who are thinking they may increase again. I think they're going to hold steady. And if, in fact, that does happen, then again, we probably will have some tailwinds. and We may get a bear market bounce. Um, at least I'm thinking come maybe July, August, we may get a significant bounce. I don't know if we'll be in a bull market, but I do think we may get a bit of a bounce. I think for us to go into a bull market... We really need the Fed to start cutting rates or reducing rates. And that may still happen, too, towards the end of the year, or early 2024. So at least th those are my thoughts. That's my two cents. And it may only be worth two cents. So let's jump into the main part of the video. So I've been selling options a long time. I started with covered calls. But about three years ago, I decided to learn the right way to actually sell options. And I learned about the option wheel. And it became probably my favorite strategy. It's really several strategies in one, and you start off with selling puts. So just a quick definition or description of what the option wheel is. To start off with, you sell a put. And what is a put? A put is you, you can sell a put, which is giving someone the opportunity to sell you shares, and they'll actually pay you premium for doing that. So you start off with that. You, you give someone the opportunity to sell you those shares they pay pay you and then if they get assigned you can then sell a call and it would be a covered call because you're assigned again one of my favorite strategies the covered call so at that point when you sell a covered call you're selling the opportunity to buy those shares from you and again someone will pay you some premium for doing that so then if you get assigned again what happens is now you've got the cash and you can sell a put. And so it's like a wheel. You, you sell a put, you get a sign. You sell a call, you get a sign, and so on and so on. Um, and that just keeps it really, really simple. So the purpose of today's video is just to talk about selling calls. Not calls, puts, excuse me. And what's really key, and I talk about this in every video that I put out there, is finding the right underlying stocks. At the end of the video, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about how I do that, but I, I like to look for companies. I'll use Schwab's screeners. I will also use Seeking Alpha. It's You can go to seekingalpha.com. Uh, I have a pre premium membership, so I read a lot of the articles, and they release articles about good-paying dividend companies, about you know, what's happening. You can literally look at a particular company and see what others are writing about it and what they're saying about it. And it, it works really well for me. So that's one thing I also like to use. I also listen to Invest Talk. I listen to some of their recommendations and I've gotten some ideas from them. And then once I have a few ideas and I dig a little deeper, I look, you know, do they, are they increasing earnings? Are they increasing revenues? Do they have, how much debt do they have? I like companies that, that have minimal debt, either no debt or, you know, their debt to equity ratio is relatively low. Um, and then I also like to look at dividends. I'm an income investor and I really like companies that pay dividends and grow dividends. So I also look at that. I primarily prefer to invest in companies that, that are increasing dividends and paying a fairly nice dividend. Um, I don't always do that. I do have a couple of companies I like to trade in. One is Zoom that doesn't pay dividends, but I feel like it's undervalued. So that's the other key point I like to do. I like to find companies that are closer to their 52-week low, especially during a bear market, and be able to you know, pick up good premium 
by selling puts on them. And I've been able to do that really well with Zoom. I currently don't own any Zoom, but I probably have done eight to 10 trades on Zoom and nothing has been assigned to me at this point. Actually, I, I would like some some Zoom to be assigned to me, but it seems like it, it bounces back up and it never gets assigned. So I may take a little bit more risk and, and actually look at trying to pick up Zoom and pick up more. By doing that, I would pick up more premium too. So and we'll go into a little bit more detail about, you know, the underlying stocks and how they're so important because, you know, it, you really want to own those stocks. If you don't want to own them and then you're assigned, it's kind of a bigger deal. Now, it doesn't mean you won't change your opinion and suddenly you don't want to own a stock. That happens to everyone. For instance, Big Lots. I wanted to own Big Lots initially, but now I, I, I already own it. It was assigned to me, but it's gone through a really tough time. I probably have taken a significant loss on it, you know, so it's dynamics change. It got hit by COVID and then inventory issues. And and so that'll also happen. It's it's not a matter of perfection. It's a matter of getting it right more than you get it wrong. And, and that's what I try to shoot for. Maybe, you know, picking the right stocks 90% of the time and maybe 10% of the time, you know, making a couple of mistakes. So, and we all do, we all have some trades go against us. And sometimes we, we pick the wrong companies. Um, I also believe don't sit on them. If, if it's not a good company. Uh, one thing I like to do is, you know, being that I bring in a lot of income selling options, I also like to, you know, whenever I have losses, I will take those losses to reduce my gains um, and I'm doing that currently with big lots. I may actually take the loss before the end of the year, depending on where I stand this year, tax-wise and capital gain-wise. So so th the next key point, once you've identified a really good company, is coming up with a really good strike price. I typically like to start with around 10% below the current price. So, you know, if you're looking at Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola is $60, I would look at around $54 or $55 to try to pick up a stock like that. And that's usually a starting point. I also look at what's called Delta, which is a Greek. And it's just the probability that that option contract will expire out of the money. So I typically, for puts, I'll look at a 15 Delta, which relates to an 85% probability that that again, that put will expire outside the money. And that also just like trying to look for something that's 10% below the current price, a 15 delta coincides a lot with 10% below. Um, and another important point is the farther you go out, I do get a lot of questions, well, why do you go so far out? Why do you go, th you know, two, three, four months out, whereas other people will only go a couple weeks or, you know, do a 30-day or 45-day DTE, which is days till expiration. I like to go a little farther out because the farther out you go, the lower the price you can pick. So a strike price, if you go 30 days out, and I'll use Coca-Cola as an example, if I go 30 days out, I might have to pick, let's say, 57. Now, if I go 45 days out, maybe 55. And then if I go 60 or 90 days out, I might be able to pick a strike price at like 52 or 53. And I prefer, especially during a bear market, to minimize my risk and I can do that by picking a lower strike strike price. Now I'll probably change that in the next bull market. I probably will take will switch that to more like a 20 delta and take a little bit more risk. Um, but so far the 15 delta has worked out well for me. And that that's the other key point is is the time horizon. So I will go a little farther out, mainly because I know I'm not going to keep those contracts that long. Rarely do I I let the contracts expire. So I, I will do a, like a three month out contract, but then I typically close it two to three weeks early. And sometimes as much as a month or two, if, if you sell a put, and again, let's use Coca-Cola and you sell a put at 55 and then suddenly Coke goes up to 65. Well, your put is really, really profitable. So you can close it. And I find that happens a lot. I'll end up closing um, those particular puts early and I don't need to keep them, you know, for the full 90 days or 120 days, depending on whatever time horizon I pick. And the same thing with calls. So, you know, if you sell a call and again, we'll use Coca-Cola. If you sell a call at 65 and Coke drops down to 55, those calls are going to become very profitable. And then again, you can, you can close those. Um, now, do I do a perfect 
or, or am I perfect with closing those when they become profitable? I can probably do a much better job. I don't typically set up the trade when I first put it together to close on a specific loss or profit gain. I typically watch it and, and make decisions, and that's probably not the best way to do it. I could probably do a little bit better than, than doing that in particular, you know, setting up a, a loss stop or, I don't know, I think it may be called a profit stop, um, which would force the option to be closed if it reached a certain profit or loss potential. Um, and the other one is premiums. I, I kind of have, I've been doing this long enough that what I'd like to do is earn as close to $100 per contract that I can now. I'm okay if I do, I will do from 70 to 100. So, you know, and I typically do two contracts. So my typical trade is is still right around $200. So it is about 100 per contract, but I'll go as low as like 170, 165, or maybe even 150 for two contracts. And sometimes I'll do two over 200, you know, on two contracts. And I find that's the right amount of premium for me. I try to do one trade a day, five trades a week if I can. And I try to earn about a thousand a week. Um, and I try to earn around 4,000 a month. Um, <clears throat> and that, that all depends. So it's, it's averages. Some weeks I may do six, 700. Other weeks I may do 11 or 1200. Some week or some months I may do over 400 or four, not 400, 4,000. I think I did over 4,500 last month. In the previous month, I think I did 3,700. So it's all averages. And, you know, so I don't necessarily beat myself up if I don't reach those goals. It's, it's, again, it's a goal. And on a monthly average, I'm pretty close to my goal. And then also, if it's not a good day to trade, then I don't trade. So there'll be days like a lot of Fridays, I don't end up trading, part, partly because I get really busy on Fridays as well as Thursdays. Sometimes I don't trade on Thursdays. Um, <clears throat> you know, and some other days I'll do two trades versus, you know, one trade. But again, I try to minimize it. I try to make it very passive. I don't spend a whole lot, a lot of time on the market. Um, I like to get on and off, um, make what I can make, and then, you know, jump back on the next day, you know, unless there's a major event, then I will jump back on. Now, the last piece related to selling puts is risk management. So what I typically do, I have a planning worksheet that I release to my memberships. If you're curious about my memberships, details are below. I have two levels. I've made them fairly inexpensive. The lower level, you get access to my trades, spreadsheets. You can contact me directly. Um, you can comment on any of my posts. I'm going to be adding additional content um, for the higher, more expensive membership. It's you actually get access to me on a weekly basis for 15 minutes, and it's always more than 15 minutes. But you will set up a Zoom meeting, and I'll work directly with you. And you can run ideas by me. You can see, you know, what I think of your trades, or vice versa. Um, you could ask me questions about my trade. So that kind of details are below. Um, and as always, please hit that like button, subscribe. Again, I'm trying to get the word out. A lot of people don't know that they can actually do this and it, it can be a life changer. So again, I start the risk management process. I do this planning worksheet on a weekly basis. I put any, any contracts that will be expiring in the coming weeks and I will color code them. I will talk you know, I'll look through what I need to do to manage those. Do I need to roll them? Do I need to close them? Do I need to, you know, potentially let them be assigned? Um, and I, I do that. I used to have one huge spreadsheet and I found it was too cumbersome, would take too much time to, to work with. So that's why I do literally a new spreadsheet each week. And at the top of that spreadsheet, I, I put in there some of my favorites that I'm looking at for the week. They're not necessarily um, contracts that I'm going to write that week or, or options that I'm going to sell, but it's companies I, I like at that time. They're either good values, good prices, and stocks that I want to own or ETFs. I also will trade in ETFs. So, well, that being said, let's jump into the next part of the video, which will be the demo. I'm actually going to show you what it looks like to actually do the trade. I don't know if I'm going to actually make a trade, but I'm going to show you you know, the steps I take and, and actually go into the Schwab 
um, environment or portal so you can see how it works. Now, Schwab has been making improvements. They combined with TD Ameritrade, and they've hopefully taken the best of both worlds, but they've added some more bells and whistles lately. So if you're currently trading with Schwab, you may not be aware of some of these. So stay tuned. Let's jump into the next part of the video. Okay, now I've opened my Schwab account, and this is one of my brokerage accounts. So you can see one of the companies I wanted to talk about, but these these are all the different companies that I currently have. Um, I've got BP, um, Citigroup, and again, I, I do all my banking or credit card banking with Citigroup, and it's done pretty well. And then Cisco, eBay, these are all different companies. You can see most of these are covered calls. So most of these I did with the wheel strategy. I actually ori originally sold puts on them and then some of them got assigned to me. And, you know, so currently I don't have a whole lot of puts in here. I do believe I have, uh, what is BMY, which is Bristol Myers. I recently actually earlier today, just rolled it out to, uh, September 15th. It, it was expiring in two weeks from tomorrow. Um, you know, so the, these are all the different companies that I work with. And again, it's part of the reason I really like the wheel strategy is, you know, you can be generating a lot of premium as you're buying these stocks. So again, I'm not just an option seller, I'm an income investor, and I really like to own companies to pay good dividends. And over here, you can see they, they're they all paying good dividends. Now the 23% is a little ridiculous. It's uh, big lots and it's they're still paying a dividend, but my guess is they probably will cut that dividend. It's because their stock price has gone down so much. But all of these pay pretty good dividends. You know, BP is four and a half percent. Citigroup, I believe, is over four percent. I I can't tell if that's a zero or a six. I think that's four point six percent. But one company I wanted to talk about was Cisco. So Cisco is one of my favorites, and you can see I own 400 shares of it and currently have two covered calls. I recently closed the covered calls that I had, and I believe I opened these new ones earlier in the week. You know, But I do like how Schwab does this, so I can go in and I can look at Cisco. And I, I do this with pretty much any of the companies, so Schwab does a nice job of, of the way they display it and show the information. One thing that's interesting, you notice the market's up when I started the work on this video, the market was actually down. So my guess is the debt ceiling news probably is at the market. Um, you know, so we are getting a little bit of a tailwind. So hopefully that'll continue and hopefully um, the Fed will also talk about holding rates steady. You know, so here you can see the 52 week range. Um, Cisco is one, one of my favorite companies. It's A rated by Schwab. <clears throat> it's got a double by MSCI. It's, so these are different rating um, agencies that will rate it. You can see Morningstar, it's four. Uh, it doesn't move a whole lot. So it's it's relatively a good company to sell puts on. Mainly, you know, it doesn't doesn't go way up and it doesn't go way down. And it, it works out well to sell puts and then also to sell calls later on. Um you know, so I look at that. I also look to see what the trends are. So 50 day, it's 48, 47. So it's a little bit over its its 200 day trend, with, which is 47 or just shy of uh, 50, I believe. What is it again? Currently, it's 49. So it's $2 higher than that. And it's not, it's closer to its 52 week high than its 52 week low. Um it beat earnings recently. It pays a nice dividend and increased dividends just slightly recently from 38 to 39. You know, so I look at all this. I look at the dividends, the fact that I can go in and see how the company's doing. I can see, you know, how they've been increasing dividends. Now they've slowed down. The three-year growth rate is only 3%, whereas the five and 10-year was higher for dividends. Um, you know, so I'll look at this. And, you know, so they, they at one time were more of a growth company and less of a dividend company, but they are definitely a dividend company now and a dividend grower, a good company. Um, I also like to look at their, see how their debt is. So they've been paying down debt. You can see it was 25, 24, 14, 11, 9. 
And they've also been buying back shares, so their shareholder equity is lower, the total equity is, is lower. At least in the last year, it looks like it's they went down and then they went back up. So this is what I do a lot. I, I will look at these companies. I will see you know, where they stand. Then I'll come over and I'll look to see, do they have a lot of option activity? Um, sometimes I have to go over a little bit more. And they typically have quite you know good volume. I, I'll go if I look at 29 days. So you can see it has a lot of volume. Um, and it has a lot of open interest. And open interest is just you know, people actually have contracts out there that haven't been filled yet, but they're, you know, they're definitely, I've never had issues with rolling or closing um, or even, you know, doing pretty much anything with Cisco in relation to options. I've, I've had very few difficulties and that's something else you want to look at. So I look at that. Then I, a lot of times I'll come over to, this is Seeking Alpha and I just thought I'd share it if you guys currently aren't using it, but here you can see it also gives you a nice graphic look and feel. You can look at dividends, valuation, growth, financials. But what I really like is here, you can see what the SA analysts, so these are people who write the articles and what Wall Street is suggesting, and it gives it a score. And here you can actually find the analysis. You can see what people are saying, and it makes it easy to, to work with. So this came out just a couple days ago about Cisco put the hype aside, Cisco system is worth another look. You know, here's someone on the opposite end of the spectrum just two days before saying, hold Cisco, don't sell it. Um, also on the right, you get news. So the fact that they declared a, a dividend and then the different SEC filings, you know, so all this makes it really nice to work with them. Now let's go back and... Um, one thing I wanted to show you guys, let me move this up a little bit. It's still showing some, some details here, so I'm actually going to go back to positions. Sorry about the image stuff. I'm going to put this back up here. So I was talking earlier about how they've done a nice job. Schwab has done a nice job um, making it a little bit easier. So when you're dealing with, these are all covered calls. I was going to look for a put, so BMY. So They've added more bells and whistles, and this is, you know, here you can go directly to transactions, you can go to roll positions. If you select the, you know, the down arrow you for the actual security, you can easily jump to what you want to do. You can also go directly to option chains. Um, the big piece that I found was that, let me go back to BMY is if you go to roll now you can pull this up and you can select what you want to roll and it'll actually select the next group of options that you probably will want to look at. This is new. This is something I haven't seen before and now I'm finding I'm using it all the time. It saves me a lot of time with setting up the trades. So if you're currently working with Schwab, be sure to take a look at that. Um, now if you go to... Like BMY is another one I like. I can go to option chains. And they've they've added more bells and whistles here. So I do like how you can switch this to Greeks. You can, I'll do 120 days. And this is typically what I do once I found a company, again, by using um, Schwab's research tab. Like we're currently in the research tab. This is the option chains, but let's move this over here. But you've got a lot of bells and whistles here. You can look at, they have screening tools. You can set up your watch lists. You can, you know, they even have tools related to working with, with options themselves, mutual funds, ETFs. 
So they give you a lot here, and I, I end up using that a lot too. I will sometimes set up the screeners to see if I can find some stocks, and that's worked out well for me too. Um, so BMY is, is another company I like, and you know, using the option chain here, you've got the Delta. So as I was saying before, I typically will look for, these are calls on the left, these are puts on the right, and you can see the Delta... So this is expiring tomorrow, so that's why it's, I typically like to go out to like 29 days. And here you can see an 18 Delta. So I would consider this at $61, but that's not enough premium for me. So two things I'd want to change. Let's do this to 16 strikes. Let's go a little farther out. So I'll go out to maybe 50 days, July 21st. So here you can see an 18 delta because you never or very rarely can you find a true 15 delta. Now, if you're doing SPY or IWM, you can find something usually right on the 15 delta or really close. But here, you know, I have choices. I can go to a 10 delta or 18 delta or 31 delta. So the 18 delta I would consider. And then I typically, for a cash secured put, you know, I'd bring in six, between 62 and $66 um, which again isn't truly enough money for me. I like to have it more like a hundred, but I could also look to see. Well, I could also buy the fifty, which is thirty dollars. So if I wanted to do a vertical put credit spread, I wouldn't bring in a whole enough money here. So then I would go, and you can see. Let's keep track. Eighteen delta at sixty dollars. So let's go out to one hundred eight, which is September fifteenth, and here we've got a just shy of a 17 delta. So here you can see it's 16.85 and it's 84, between 84 cents and 88. And you can see that BMY or, or Bristol Myers is actually up today. It was down when I made my trade earlier today. So this was closer to a hundred, you know, to a dollar. So this is 84 to 88. So a cash secure put, I would consider it, but you'll notice the price is 57.50. So then I, Typically, I would, if I want to just do a cash secure put, I would just come over here, I would do select, and I would make the trade. And I would, if I did a market trade, I probably would get $84, maybe slightly better. But I would also look to see, well, what does it cost me to buy the 50? Now it's $27. Um, I would also look at the 55.45. Um, but I would probably come back to this 57.50 and look look at doing that. Now I could go out a little farther, and here you're saying we're going out almost to December, actually going to December, 197 days. So, <clears throat> but there again, an 18 or close to a 15 Delta, you're talking $55 and the currently it's at 60, almost $65. So you're talking $10 less than the current price, which is significantly the 52 re week range is 63 to 81. This is much, much lower than the 52 week low. And you bring it in at $111, and then the 45 is between 32 and 55 So, and this is what I would do. And if, if I could, you know, if this 55 45 <clears throat> I would turn it into a vertical put credit spread if this 45 was cheaper. So say this 45 was more like $0.15, cents and this was $1.11, then that would bring in really close to $100, for you know one contract and then I would typically do two contracts um, and part of the reason it's not is you see people are buying puts to protect themselves that's why you're saying so much you know the puts that are 35 and 40 dollars are so expensive and even 55 dollars for a 45 put is pretty pricey so again is to protect themselves on the downside a lot of people will buy puts here so this is kind of what it looks like now if you do select so we'll say act like we're going to buy this now if i scroll back up try not to show my account number so here here's the actual trade and then i can kick click continue it's shown the bid ask i can say continue and again i'm trying to hide my account number so here it's saying the bid mid ask and it's showing a limit price. So it would put it slightly higher than the ask if I did a limit trade. 
Now, I typically like to do market trades, so that would actually probably do the 111. Um, I need to do this at sell to open. So yeah, 111, it's gonna typically pick that. Now, with the market trades, if it if Schwab can do better, they will. So sometimes you'll get 114, 113 instead of that. Um, <clears throat> and the primary reason I do the market trades is I don't want to be, you know, a lot of times, if you're doing a, um, a limit trade, like we'll put this back to a limit trade, you'll have to go back and forth. We can say this 1.22. You have to keep going back and forth. Like I could fire this, review it, or review the order, and then make the order. And then I'll have to come back again and again if, if by chance it doesn't get filled. Now, if, a market, if I switch this to a market trade, it's guaranteed to get filled. And if I'm okay this, with this 1.11, then I'm done. I can move on, do whatever I want to do. And I've just picked up $111 at a price of 55, which is really cheap. Now, again, I typically don't go this far out. Now, I, I did a trade earlier today with September and it worked out quite well. But again, with the market changing and being up, um, the amount of premium for the puts are a lot lower. The premium for the calls would be much higher currently with BMY. Um, I, so back in September or for September, I picked up pretty close to, I think, $80, $80 per contract. So I probably would look at, and here I can change things again. So I'll look, I'll go back to $9.15. So you're talking only $55. Now, if I did $721, you can see it's it's very little, um, but it's still at $55. And the chance of it going to $50 to $5 is very slim. So usually when I get fairly close to the trade, I figure out what, what strikes I like. Then I'll mess with this page until I'm happy with, with the trade. Then I'll do the review order and I'll go through the trade and make it. So that that's kind of what I do. It's, um, again, the most important part is picking good companies. Now, B Bristol Myers doesn't move a huge amount. Other stocks will, you know, if you pick like NVIDIA or companies that are moving quite a bit, you you know, you'll get more premium, but the stock can go against you very quickly. So you have to be very careful. And if you're new, I typically will start with one contract. Then I move to two contracts. You know, you can see here it doubles the price. Um, you can also do something that's called a leap. So you could say, well, I'm willing to invest in that and I'll I'm willing to look at $45 and the chance of Bristol Myers getting down to 45 it hasn't gotten down to 45 other than maybe um what was it March of 2020 so here this is considered a leap because it's more than a year so for a $45 put you could bring in $308 um, something else you could do. I've done that from time to time. I believe I did a trade like this with IBM and it can work out pretty nicely, especially if you need some cash quickly. This is something I've done in the past. So I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit more detail on, on how I do this. Um, and as always, if you have questions or comments or concerns, please leave a comment below and thanks for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend.